Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Steve Martin. And in studio, I have as our special guest, Diana Winand. Hi, Steve. Hi, it's good to have you back. Good to be here. And today you're going to talk to us about the transition from the A word, Avid, Avid. to Final Cut Pro. <laughs> now, yeah. this is uh, no idle uh, show because there are a lot of people out there that, that use Avids and, and Final Cut, and there, and there are a lot of people that need to make the transition because, well, Final Cut's showing up in a lot more studios now. Exactly, yeah. And um, it's just helpful to know kind of some of the pitfalls and some of the uh, areas that you can kind of run into problems and how right. to negotiate those things. Right, sure. So you're going to show us some of the things that an Avid editor would want to know I when approaching Final yeah, Cut Pro? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh. And um, I wrote a book called Final Cut Pro for Avid Editors, and that really gives a good translation between the two. But, you know, when it, that doesn't really speak to the experience of sitting down to a whole new, um, you know, app when you're used to being on something else. Absolutely. So the first thing, Steve, is that Final Cut Pro is is a not tool. an avid. It's not an avid. Oh, right. It's not an avid. Right. And but it's a tool. They're both tools. They're both sure. really good tools. Excellent. And like any tool, they'll you know, uh, you know, it's like driving a new car. You know, it's like you know how to drive. The but stick shifts here, are but a wait, the, different. Where's the radio now. dial? Exactly. And how do you get the air conditioning on and turn? You know, so you just have to relearn some of those things. Sure. So, uh, but I find that avid editors might have a steeper learning curve. And it's not because Is it they, because they're set in their ways? Well, you could say that, but it's also because they've just spent probably more time on that system. If somebody sure. starts with Final Cut Pro, you know, as their first editing system, it's, you know, they're just learning from scratch. But if you spent 10 or, gosh, even 20 years on a system, now you try to learn something new, it's just... There's a little barrier yeah, of entry. it's and, a little yeah. bit harder uh, sure. to get into. So what I'd like to do is just show a few things that are, like, familiar territory. Excellent. And then show some more unfamiliar territory that might be little gotchas or things like that. All right, just I'm going to pretend of, I'm an avid editor and just kind of Oh, right. cool. Okay, All great. Right. All Impress right, great. me. Impress me. Yes. Well, uh, as in Avid, you have a sort of a project window. It's got all mm -hmm. your project elements. We call it the browser. And um, it, color things are color-coded. Bins and, and sequences are color-coded, and you see them throughout the interface, and that's something that uh, Avid can do, too. I'm actually going to open a clips bin here and uh, open a clip. I've got some marked that I'm going to use as a cutaway, and you mark an in and an out the same way. The I and the O key. The I and the O key. Right. Same shortcuts, good. and you patch. So far, so good. So far, okay. <laughs> in the patch panel, you can drag a source control to a destination track. It's very similar. And now you have that automatic approach. In uh, fact, the icon is very similar. You just click that red overwrite, and that drops it where my playhead location is. Now, a little bit different in Final Cut, I can just click a clip. Well, actually, I didn't want that audio, so I'm going to... Uh, disconnect that clip oh, and see. edit it again. In fact, I have a, a marker, so let me just actually go ahead and get that exactly the way I want it. I've patched my video, disconnected my audio for this cutaway, I drop it in, now I'm set to go. Great. Um, and so all of that's really familiar territory. Now what's also uh, cool is that you can click a clip and drag it, so you have a little bit more manual approach, like almost it's like much a more hybrid. Of a tactile feel to yeah, it. Yeah, sort of like a desktop, you right. know, app, almost like Photoshop, where you reach in and grab stuff, and you see the wireframe over mm -hmm. here, and that allows you to move the image around. If you if there was a microphone in the shot, and you needed to resize sure. and reposition, so that's really cool. The other thing that's a little unfamiliar is this playhead, which Avid uh, folks might call a position indicator. It tells you where you're positioned. Or Adobe calls scene. a current time indicator. Okay. Everybody Everyone has, has to their call own their name. Own thing. Yeah. I know, I know. it would be great to be the same, uh -huh. but no. So here's what's really different about that. Avid folks are used to dragging the stem of that position indicator oh. because they are in the timeline. When they click on the stem, they're not accidentally clicking clips. In Final Cut Pro, when you click, you are clicking a clip in the timeline because of what we talked about, sure. a lot of movement and flexibility. So what you have to remember in Final Cut is that you have to click on this tiny little playhead up in this ruler area and start to drag. Once you do start to drag and scrub through, then you can you can actually drop your you know you're actually uh, drop Move your, your mouse down, mouse down uh, if that uh -huh. makes you more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And notice how we're snapping to each of these mm -hmm. edit points. Sure. In Final Cut Pro, that is a default. There are certain ways in which Final Cut wants to help you. 
and right. we're we're avid editors. Say, so I don't want used that help. to being yeah. helped in that right, way. Right. And this is one of those things in avid you would have to maybe press the command key to snap, but Final Cut does that as a default. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another thing that uh, it might be a little unfamiliar is that uh, Final Cut also, a way to help you, is that it likes to keep all those tracks synced. So if you captured something with audio and video together, if you select a clip or you want to trim a clip, and I'll just select the ripple tool to trim it, it assumes you want to choose and both. change trim both, both the video, video and, and the, the audio. audio. And for Avid editors, they are so used to working with video tracks separately from audio because in dramatic editing right. split there's cut, a lot split of edits and L cuts you and, know exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, that, so that's harder it's for like them. training wheels when they it's like why is the video and audio yeah, moving yeah right why are they, and, and that's where they might get frustrated but what they have to understand is Final Cut Pro is helping you you're, okay you're right. so now uh, you can say no thank you and the way to say no thank you is just to toggle off the linked selection button over sure. here in the timeline and now when you drag a, a particular I'll just get the default selection tool now you you can change one side of the track or the other. But another fun trick is just to use the option key. So if I wanted to uh, just drag one side and I have linked selection on, I just hold down option so and it's like drag a, a, it's one a side. Link, a link override. It is. It overrides the linked selection. So you haven't unlinked the clips. They're still linked together. Right. Final Cut knows they come together, but it allows you to just simply change so it's one like side of the other. The clips other. are like like married and you're giving them a trial separation? It's a little bit like that. Okay. They get to go out on separate days right, or something exactly. like that. Separate vacations. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so that's something that you can get used to. But again, just knowing what Final Cut is doing for you and knowing that it's actually trying to help and not getting too hung up on that and just figuring out how to get around Got that it. so it doesn't slow you down, sure. I think is a good way to start and approach the editing process. Excellent. So if you're looking for some dramatic support, um, you know, Avid has the script sync where you can you know, attach or link clips to the script. Final Cut doesn't have that yet, but it is known to come up and, you know. Conversation. Yeah. yeah. To, Late to be able to, that's to right. Bars. To, oh, where's to, Final Cut? I have this. Exactly. I have a like. long list of those things. <laughs> and of course, if you're moving from Final Cut or Avid rather to Final Cut, a lot of people uh, will offline on Avid and then want to online on Final Cut because there's so many great things that it can do and of course sure. it has color. Then you can also use Automatic Duck. Which is an it's a third party application. It'll translate the Final Cut Pro timeline into, exactly. into the Avid uh, timeline. Exactly. So that's a great resource and something you can use to, uh, to bring it in. And now you're in Final Cut and it's brought a lot of your decisions already in and you're ready to go. So it's, you know, I encourage, you know, editors. I, I had an editor in one of my classes who was an editor on In Plain Sight. And uh, she approached this as a voracious student, really wanting to learn and dedicated herself to figure out how to use it in a way that got her job done and I think that's what you have to do Absolutely. you just have to take the bull by the horns and and uh, allow yourself to learn it and learn what it does and how to work with it so, exactly yeah so uh, if uh, someone wanted to get more training on Final Cut where would one go well they could come to my training company or winan.com mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we teach the authorized or an Apple authorized training center we mm -hmm. teach courses around uh, in Los Angeles and this is an Apple authorized uh, Apple certified course. That's right. This is the certified book and curriculum that's used in all the Apple authorized training centers worldwide. So if you got that book, it would be a good self help book. It'd also be a great book to just teach yourself Final Cut Pro. Excellent. Well, thanks again for uh, watching another awesome episode of Mac Break <laughs> Studio with our good friend, Diana Wine. And thanks for coming, Diana. Thanks, Steve. Enjoyed it. <laughs>